Welcome to the first in my series of three vlogs all about the secret to happiness that I'm so excited to share with you. I want to really prove to you that happiness is something that any one of us can grow with the right kinds of practice. So my name is Jenny, so Jenny Allen Smith, and I am a transformational coach and a master NLP practitioner. Neuro-linguistic programming is all about the language of the mind, and this is so important when we think about the secret to happiness. In this vlog series, I'm going to share with you some scientifically proven ways to really strengthen your core happiness using some very simple everyday practices. Now, many of these do not take very much time. Of the interventions that I share with you, I would really love for you just to pick the ones that really speak to you. Um, and if you practice these a lot, you will become transformed. My aim is that you will find a brand new relationship with yourself based on the foundations of true happiness. And the magical thing about happiness is that this is a subjective feeling. If you feel happy, you are happy. Um, and every day, really, you have this amazing ability to make simple decisions to enable you to feel happier more of the time. In other words, I think happiness is very much a decision and it's one that you can choose to make right now. So Dr. Rongan Chatterjee in his 2022 study of happiness uses a brilliant analogy of a three-legged stool to describe how we get to true core happiness. He says that happiness is represented by three things, and these form the legs here of the stool that you can see. So alignment, control, and contentment. And if we're looking for true happiness, we need to get good at all of these things in our lives. So alignment is when our inner values and our external actions line up. Um, so the person that we want to be and the person that we are actually being in the world are one and the same. Now, control is all about, do we really feel a sense of agency in our lives and in our work? Do we feel a sense that the world around us is predictable and it is safe. And then contentment is all about the degree of calmness that you feel in your life. Do you feel at peace with the decisions that you are making? And the important thing I think for us to remember is that happiness isn't a final destination that one day you will reach and everything will be pure joy forever. It doesn't work like that. It is more of a journey. Um, the three-legged stool won't stay upright for you all of the time. Some days will absolutely be better than other days, but with regular practice, your core happiness stool will become more stable. So today's leg of the stool in today's vlog is all about alignment and how we really feel aligned. So step one, it's about how you identify. Now, this is incredibly important to happiness. I'd encourage you to really spend some time defining who you really are. Um, your personal identity really comes from your values. So that's what I would love for us to work on first. Now, the process of defining your identity is so important. It's going to massively help you to strengthen this alignment leg of our stool. I really want your inner values and your external actions to line up. Um, but how can you become aligned if you haven't really taken the time to examine what your values really are in the first place. So my first question to you is, what do you truly value in your life? On this slide here, you'll see that I've listed some example values, but this list is by no means exhaustive. Um, I really would love for you to use it as a guide only. So please feel free to add your own values as and when these come to mind. Take a moment now, if you will, and just choose three values that are either here on the slide or that come to mind already that resonate with you the strongest. 
press pause if you would like just to take all the time here that you need because this part of our exercise is so critical to your happiness. The practice that I would then encourage you to do from this point is a weekly one. And um, every week, I encourage you just to take a few minutes and assess how are you doing in becoming this person, the person who is literally living and breathing the values that you have just selected. Write your values down. This is so important. It helps you to become more accountable and to really clearly set your intention to do this. And then assess your actions and behaviors every week. Do they align to your values? Are you acting like the person that you really want to be? And this is your first step to core happiness. It's absolutely essential because you are not going to get there if you haven't actually worked out where there really is. Now, when you do this, I don't want you to be too hard on yourself. So when you're assessing your weekly progress against living these values, this is going to be a lifelong process. What we really want to aim for here is for an increased awareness, an awareness of where you are and a steady improvement. Consistency really is the key word here. And when you start working on your alignment in this way, the in inevitable consequence is that you instantly start living your life with greater meaning and purpose. Now, step two is really to consider the identity and the values that you show within your connections to other people. I really want you to truly show these to others around you. Now, one factor that absolutely predicts happiness in almost every study of this is social connection. This is perhaps, I think, one of the most basic and widely replicating findings from the science of happiness that our connection connections to other people are absolutely instrumental to our level of happiness. So I'd like you just to consider for a moment the difference between belonging and fitting in. Are you truly belonging in your social circles with your connections or are you merely fitting in? Because as Brené Brown so wisely says in her book Atlas of the Heart, we have to belong to ourselves as much as we need to belong to other people. Now, when we talk about belonging, belonging is being accepted for being your true self, for really being you. Fitting in is a bit like being accepted for being like everybody else around you. So if we look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs that you can see here on the slide, again, what recent research shows is that finding a sense of true belonging in close social relationships and within our community as well is actually essential to our happiness. Um, and what makes that belonging essential is that as human beings, we are actually a social species. We cannot survive without one another. This is simply what it means to be human. So true belonging, this is a practice of believing yourself, belonging to yourself so deeply that you feel that you can share your most authentic self with the world. And I think it's a real mistake to think of belonging as being passive um, and being about simply joining in and just getting along, just going along with the rest of the group. Um, because actually belonging is a practice that will require you to identify moments in your life where you can be vulnerable, where you can get uncomfortable, where you can learn how to be present without sacrificing who you really are. Because when we sacrifice who we really are, we not only feel separate from other people, we even feel really disconnected from ourselves. So consider this when we're talking about this leg of the alignment stool. Are you living in alignment? The way you are on the inside and the way you are on the outside are one and the same. So I've got another exercise for you here. Again, press pause at any point that you feel you just want to take some more time to reflect on these questions. But are you authentically living your life? So question one, where in your life are you very honestly just fitting in? right now. Um, perhaps you're part of a book club 
perhaps you you read a book you absolutely hate every page of that book but you go along to that book club and you tell everyone because everyone is sharing how much they loved the plot and the characters that actually yes I loved it too when actually perhaps you go home and you reflect and think why didn't I just speak my truth because actually we'll have this debate, this dialogue with ourselves afterwards that can be really deeply uncomfortable that we have to sit with, that we have to live with because we haven't spoken our truth. So where can you speak your truth? Um, and then the question too, where are you authentically belonging? Think about those social circles. When I think about where can I be my most authentic self, it's probably just with a very small number of people, close family, very close friends. Um, and as a parent, you know, I have this goal that I want my children to really believe in and belong to themselves, to know that no matter what, they always belong with us at home and that we really see them for who they are. We love them for who they are. And the message very much is just be here and be you because you absolutely belong. So think about that in your life as well. Where are you authentically belonging? And then... For this blog, we have one final exercise, and this is one of my favorites. This is the happiness wheel. Um, I'd like you just to consider what is truly important to you, and then thinking about those connections. Who are those connections that we value the most to? And we're going to pull this all together into one final coaching tool that I fondly call the happiness wheel. But lives are complex, aren't they? It's so easy, I think, for our different roles and different areas of our life to just get out of balance. So this exercise is so effective because it gives you an opportunity just to take a bit of a snapshot of where you are today and allow you to make more conscious decisions for tomorrow. So I really want you to think about what are the things in your life that make you feel truly happy um, and just if you will take a moment draw a circle perhaps on a piece of paper Divide it into segments, as you can see here on the slide, and just label those segments with the things that make you happy. Here, I have demonstrated the things in my life that make me feel really happy. Walking the dog, dancing, reading, spending time with key people in my life. Take a moment to do the same and just to label what are those key things that make you feel really happy. Think about times when you've experienced joy and what, what led to that experience of joy. And then when you're ready, I'd love for you just to imagine a scale of zero to 10. Zero would be the center of the wheel and 10 would be the outskirts of the wheel. And I'd like you to rank your level of satisfaction with each of these segments of your life. Ask yourself, to what extent am I happy with the attention that I personally give to each segment? Zero, middle of the wheel would be I'm not happy at all. 10 would be, yes, absolutely, I'm very focused on that. I dedicate a really good amount of time to that. And then just take a moment and perhaps even shade in that segment of the wheel. I'm a very visual person, so I think this is just such a lovely visual tool to be able to see actually where can I create more balance and harmony in my life. And then the final part of this exercise is to think about, OK, what am I going to do about it? Let's set some goals. Where would you like each segment to be? Um, remember, it's not realistic necessarily to have a 10 for every segment of our life. I don't think life really works like that. But set some reasonable goals. Perhaps you've currently got spending time with friends as a three and you might want to aim realistically within the next three months to get that up to a six, perhaps, just as an example. See what works for you and see what's resonating with you about your wheel of happiness now. Where do you really want to focus? And then I just want to share some final coaching questions with you about your wheel. Just reflect. Are there any surprises here for you? How do you feel about your happiness wheel and where your focus is? Is your focus, is your time really being spent in the right places? How can you change your score? What actions can you take? 
have you ever perhaps been higher up than this number that you've recorded today with this segment? What was different then? What was different when you were higher up that, that happiness scale? What was actually happening when you were higher up? Can you replicate that in any way? And then what would need to happen for you to move up just one point on that scale by this time next week or next month, depending on what time scale you want to set yourself? And what, what might get in the way? What might affect you moving up that scale? And then how might you overcome these obstacles? How can you prepare? But remember, there's no such thing as perfect balance in life. Life is just too fluid. It's too dynamic for that. But I think knowing that you've got this baseline now really allows you to decide and set your intentions, set goals. How can I increase my base level of happiness via my actions? And then if you do decide to take some action, which I really hope you do, then actually come back and review this. Review this in three months time. This is a great tool just to keep coming back to, to reflect on any changes that you might want to make. So I hope that you have already started to see that happiness is absolutely this practice that you can practice day by day. So today we've talked about alignment. So make sure that your day by day actions line up to the person that you want to be. I'll see you soon for our next session.